This video features 75 advanced tips for the 75 brawlers currently in Brawl Stars. This video took me a very long time to make, so hope you all enjoy it. Let's go ahead and begin. First off, we got Shelly. Super the enemies from as close as you can get to them so that more bullets can hit the enemy. Then use your clay pigeon's gadget if you have it after your super to burst them down from a distance after you knock the enemy back. For Nita, throw your bear in front of you if you need it to scout bushes or need it thrown over walls. Throw it next to you to tank shots from the enemies, or throw it behind you if you want to tank shots for your teammates or have it surprise the enemies. Now for Colt, save your super to use after you run out of ammo to finish off the enemies. Since the animation takes longer for the super to finish compared to his main attack, in case you miss your super, it's going to take a while until you can redirect your shots onto the enemy. Now for Bull, make sure you have ammo before charging onto the enemy. Enemies. You won't be reloading mid charge and you want to have as much ammo as possible so you can burst down the enemy in time. Now with Brock, use your shots to hit enemies that are hiding behind walls. With El Primo, never ever chase down the enemies while attacking. Your attack range is shorter when running forward. Always have the enemies chase you because your attack range is longer when running away and attacking the enemy. For Barley, use Barley Super as a way to cover choke points or a specific area on the map. It doesn't do more damage than his main attack so never use it to deal damage. For Poco, always use your super onto multiple teammates so you can get the most value out of every super. If you are using the screeching solo star power, use your super onto multiple teammates and multiple enemies if you can to be as efficient as possible with every super. If your teammates are low, just heal them up and support them. That's more important if there are no enemies nearby. For Rosa, do not use your super when you are below half health unless the enemies are below half health as well. It'll be better to just save her super when she has more health to increase her chances of surviving during her super and increase her chances of chaining another one. With Jesse, always place Scrappy behind cover so that it's harder for enemies to take it down. Also, if you use the spark plug gadget, the gadget can slow enemies through walls too, which is why it's so important to place Scrappy behind cover in most situations. For Dynamite, fire his shots in sets of two. Your first set of Dynamites will bait the enemies to move one way, then with your second set of Dynamites, you will have a higher chance of hitting the enemy. With Tech, all you gotta do is spam. Okay. Nah, I'm just joking. In all seriousness, try not to auto-aim your shots. Since the Tick Mines change positions depending on how far away you are aiming, most of the time when you're using auto-aim, it will probably just cause you to miss a lot of Tick Mines by the time it reaches the enemy. Now with Ape, you always want to place your damage booster station behind cover to keep it active as long as possible. Also try to put it in a more central location so that it can benefit your teammates without them going out of their way to get a damage boost. For Rico, always make use of the walls and other obstacles to bounce your shots to hit the enemies. It increases your range every time the balls bounce, so take advantage of Rico's mechanics to extend your attack range. For Daryl, always try and roll directly onto the enemies for two specific reasons. First off, you want to be as close as possible to them so you can deal as much damage as you can because he is a shotgun brawler after all. Secondly, if you bump into the enemy with your roll, they will be in a very short hit stun and that can help you and your teammates take them down even quicker. Now with Penny, you want to try to position yourself to try to get as much value out of your splash damage. Move yourself so that your target is in between yourself and the enemies that could possibly be standing behind your target. This will help you deal more damage with your main attacks, plus it helps you charge up your super even quicker, which is probably the most important part about playing Penny. Now for Carl, try to bounce your pickaxe off of walls every time you throw your pickaxe. This way you you are shortening the duration that the pickaxe is in the air and causing it to return back to Carl even faster. This helps you spam away and just keep constant pressure throughout the match. For Jackie, before using your super to drag the enemies closer to you, save your ammo so that you can deal enough damage to take them down while they're in a slight hit stun. For Gus, always give the shield from your super to the strongest player on your team. The best player should be getting the shield because they can stay alive longer and hopefully carry even harder with that shield. Now for Bo, try to place your mines when the enemies are off screen. This way, the enemies won't know where you place them and will be totally caught off guard when they end up triggering the mines. They won't won't be expecting them to be placed and they won't have a quick enough reaction time to escape it. For M's, always stay at a mid range when playing her. You don't want to be too close because she does the least amount of damage close up. You don't want to be too far away because your shots may not reach or you'll only be doing one tick of damage. Find that sweet spot and practice keeping that distance every time when in a fight. Now with Stu, always have a super saved up in your back pocket ready to use in case of emergencies. It can be helpful to dodge incoming attacks or just travel across the map quick 
quicker in tighter situations. If you are using the Gasol Heal Star Power, you can use this tip as a way to get some health when you absolutely need it. For Piper, use your super as a way to bait the enemy's attacks or supers. You can have them waste their attacks and then jump into the air before it ends up affecting her. It also can be useful to break open walls to open up the map and benefit Piper and her team. Now with Pam, even though it looks like her scrap medals are being shot out kind of sporadically, it's actually being shot out in a sweeping pattern that moves from left to right. So you can actually try and stray from right to left as the shots are being fired out to counter the pattern from the scrap medals. Now with Frank, I mean his super is the most deadly part about him, but it's so hard to hit the enemies with his super because of how long the animation takes. So if you flex your super by aiming it or holding down your super button, that alone will scare the enemies away and you can gain control and pressure by technically just doing nothing. For BB, if you're starting to lose control and are being pressured heavily by the enemy team, stop attacking so that you can charge up your knockback bar to whack the enemies away. Just make sure you are actually connecting with it because you just running around and not attacking will just be for nothing. Now with B, when you have your supercharged shot charged up, use your super first to slow down the enemy. Since you really need to be connecting your supercharged shot more than your standard attack, it's always better to slow down the enemies if you can to increase your chances of landing each attack. Now with Nani, you want to try to position yourself so that you can angle at least one of your main attack orbs to go around walls or other obstacles. This is just going to be a great way to surprise the enemies and prevent them from healing up or even help yourself charge up your next super. Now for the CEO of Brawl stars Edgar, you want to try to save your super for the opportune moment. His super is the most important part about him because without it, let's just be real here, he's the worst brawler in the game. Now with Griff, after your super is shot out and your banknotes has reached its peak, position yourself between your banknotes so that the enemies are hit by as much of them on the way back to deal the most amount of damage possible. People kind of tend to forget that the banknotes do return to Griff and that is where you can get some extra damage in. Now with Grom, make sure you have some ammo saved up before using your super. After your super connects onto the enemy, the enemy will be in a slight hit stun so that is when you spam away with your main attacks to finish off that person. Now with Bonnie, she's kind of like with Edgar, you want to be saving her super for the most opportune moment. Jump onto enemies that are already below half health and you know you can burst them down with your main attack. Now with Gale, depending on who you are playing against kind of depends on where you want to position yourself before using your super. If you are playing against high health or short range brawlers, aim to super the enemies into an open space with no obstacles. If they have low health or are long range, super them into the walls or other obstacles so that you have an easier time bursting them down. For Colette, try to super multiple enemies going down and coming back. Each time you hit an enemy with your super, it charges your super by a quarter of the way. This will help you chain your next super a lot faster and help you keep the aggression and pressure throughout the match. For Belle, you can use her super as a way to finish off weak enemies out of your attack range. Your super actually has a longer attack range compared to your main attack, so you can use it as a clutch way to hit enemies that are running out of your main attack range. For Ash, you should never ever be auto-aiming your main attacks. Ash's attacks have a major delay, so you you need to be aiming wherever the enemies are running to, not where they currently are at. If you auto-aim your attacks, even at a close range, there's a high chance you will probably still end up missing them. Now with Lola, depending on your situation will dictate where you should place your clone. You can place it in front of you if you want the clone to tank shots because you're outranged by the enemy. You can place the clone to the side or behind you if you need to deal a lot of damage and want to protect the clone's longevity. Now with Sam, always, always, always be throwing your knuckle dusters. Be trigger happy with it. Just throw it up against the wall to heal up or to just gain that momentary movement speed buff while you're without your knuckle dusters. With Mandy, do not always depend on standing still to increase your attack range and projectile speed. I mean, yes, even though sometimes it is good to just do that, but sometimes it's still better to stay mobile and apply pressure onto the enemies instead of just standing still and making yourself an easier target. With Maisie, this tip does require you to have the disengage gadget, but it's because you can use it to dash closer to your targets and increase the chances of connecting with your super. You should be activating your super and during the delay of that explosion, dash forward with disengage. This will help you knock back the enemies even more and increase your chances of hitting more enemies. Now with Hank, you should never show where you're aiming while charging up your bubble. Aim behind you so the enemies can't tell who you are looking at to attack and then at the last second, flick your attack up to hit the enemy when your main attack is at its full radius. For Pearl, don't just constantly attack unless you 
absolutely have to. Every time you use your main attack or your super, it ends up draining your heat bar. It's better to save your ammo and charge up your heat bar so that your main attacks do the most amount of damage it can. Now with the creature of the night mortis, it's important to attack the enemies when they are grouped up. This will give you a higher chance of just getting more value out of each main attack and this will help you charge up your super even faster. For Tara, you want to always save your ammo before using your super. As you know, her super doesn't deal a lot of damage when pulling the enemies towards the center so you and your teammates need to have enough ammo to burst down the enemies while they are trapped in that short hit stun. With Jean, stand near your teammates before pulling an enemy with your super. His super is one of the best in the game but he doesn't have the DPS in order to burst them down. He needs his teammates to help take down the enemy because most of the time the enemy will be able to take Jean down in that kind of 1v1 situation. Now with Max, you want to try to use your super as a way to bait out all of the enemy's ammo. First, you should run around dodging all of the incoming attacks while the enemies are absolutely panicking. Then after their ammo is up, that is when you should go aggressive and pressure the enemy team hard. For Mr. P, always keep the enemies at a far range. You want to be attacking the enemies when they are running away from you so that the briefcase can connect twice. If the enemies are smart enough and run straight towards you, your briefcase will only hit once and it won't be enough DPS to take them down. At that point, you can just pretty much kiss your life goodbye. Now with Sprout, you want to shoot your main attacks over groups of walls or water actually to extend the distance of your shots. Aim your attacks at the far edge of the wall or water and watch it shoot across the map and catch the enemies off guard. Now for Byron, always save your super to use at the opportune moment. Throw it onto multiple teammates, multiple enemies, both teammates and enemies, or just use it to save it for yourself if you are pushed aggressively by another brawler. Now with Squeak, even though he's a mistake, he can still be very helpful. If you're trying to block a choke point, fire your next main attack after the second tick. This way, the area will be constantly blocked and enemies will be hesitant to cross over. This can help you maintain control and prevent the enemies from completing the game mode's objective. For Lou, his super makes maneuvering absolutely hell when you're standing on the ice, so the enemies will just try to attempt to escape it by moving in the same direction. This will just make it easier for you to predict where the enemies are going to be moving and make it easier to hit your attacks. Just make sure you have enough ammo saved up so that you can attack the enemies while they're sliding on the ice to help you chain your next super. Now with Ruffs, you should never throw your super onto the enemies that are far away from you. Use your super at a close range or at least mid range to give the enemies less time to run out of the supply drops landing radius. Now with Buzz, if an enemy is standing near a wall or an obstacle, it might be better to try and super onto that instead of a moving target. It's going to be harder to hit a brawler that's moving, and at least Buzz's super can stun in a small radius around him. You can use this kind of strategy so that you can stun the enemy even if they are close by. Now with Fang, you should be attacking with your far range shoe kick before you use your super. If your far range shoe ends up connecting onto the enemy before you use your super, it will actually count as a fourth of the way towards your next super. This will just help you make it easier easier to consistently chain your next super and get more team wipes. With Eves, unfortunately she has to sacrifice her hatchlings to tank incoming attacks so you can continue to apply pressure onto the enemies. This will just keep you alive longer and frustrate the enemies that can't pierce through multiple targets. Rest in peace Eve hatchlings. Now with Janet, always aim your next main attack after you use your attack. Since it takes a while for the attack to reach its maximum distance, you want to always be charging up your next main attack to maximize time efficiency. For Otis, save your ammo before using your super onto the enemy. Once the enemy is muted, they are totally vulnerable and that is when you need to take advantage and take them down. For Buster, when your super is active, strafe in the direction the enemies are strafing in as well. You want to always keep the shield in between the enemies and yourself to deflect as much projectiles as possible. You can even walk towards the enemies so that you can hit them with your main attacks once your super is done. Now with Grey, you can use your super as a way to get a confirmed kill. Lower the enemy down and then use your portals as a way to surprise the enemies wherever they are running or hiding at and then kill them. With RT, try to mark up as much enemies as you can. Once somebody is marked up, let somebody else on your team that has a higher burst damage with a single projectile hit the enemy next. This is just a great way to surprise the enemies and just get kills a lot faster. Now when you are playing Willow and playing against another Willow, you can actually use your Willow super to cancel out a teammate that is hexed. The mind controls will end up canceling out and this way you don't have to kill your teammate or kill the enemy Willow in order to stop them from being mind controlled. 
With Dougie Boy, use your super right before you or your teammate is about to die. Don't activate it too early because the enemy will purposely not want to attack you and kill you until the hot dog disappears. With Mortis's cousin Chuck, place poles, spam yellow button, spam red button, repeat, and win. Nice. No, okay, in all seriousness, just place your poles in the path of the objective. You want to be placing your poles where you know the enemies need to be walking in in order to travel up the map to help you deal more damage and get more value out of every super. Now with Charlie, since her ammo reloads after her yo-yo returns, she attacks much quicker at a closer range. So try to stay at least within mid-range of the enemies so that you can constantly spam them with your main attack. Now with the monkey Miko, use your jump attacks to cause pressure and bait gadgets, super, or main attacks from the enemy. This way, you can look for a better opportunity to jump onto the enemies to take them down. Now with Spike, even though it's not hard to miss his main attacks because whether you're using the curveball star power or not, you still want to be hitting your shots square onto the enemies. Depending on how you hit the enemies, you can deal up to double or even triple the damage and that is what makes Spike so deadly. Now for Crow, you always want to keep your distance with him. Chip down the enemies with your poison and use it to scout bushes. Use Crow's annoyingness against the enemies to absolutely frustrate them so you can gain control over the map. For Leon, always straight from right to left to counter the shurikens that are being shot out from left to right. This will help you focus your shurikens into a more direct and centered path so you can hit more of them and deal more damage overall. Now with the sleepy sandy, when using your super, you should place the sandstorm so that it touches the edges of bushes. This allows you and your teammates to use the sandstorm to head into bushes and access larger areas while the enemies believe you and your allies are still inside the sandstorm. Once the sandstorm disappears, the enemies will be totally confused and you and your teammates could use that as a way to ambush them. Now I absolutely love Amber because this is a great brawler to teach people about ammo conservation. You don't want to be running out of ammo with her unless you need all of it to take down the enemy. It of course will take a while for her to gain all of her ammo back again that's why. Now with Meg, don't worry about dying because you will always respawn with the mech. Use your health and your presence with the mech to maintain control throughout the match. Mostly because if you die, you can just respawn with it again, no problem. Now with the juicy surge, if you know you're about to die and have your super charged up, just save your super instead of trying to stage up and make a play. It's better to just respawn with the next stage because it can get you off to a quicker start after you respawn. For the jokester Chester, always have your four bells attack queued up. Three bells only if you don't have the Bellomania star power because you can catch the enemies off guard by dealing over 5,000 damage at max level if all the bells hit. Now with Cordelius, if you are running the poison mushroom gadget, use the gadget first and then use your super onto the enemy. This way you can actually use this gadget in the shadow room to help you take down that person because usually you wouldn't be able to use your gadget in the shadow room but if you activate it before then you'll be able to use it in the shadow room. Finally with Kit, when you're using your yarn balls attack, really make sure you're using each attack efficiently. It takes a lot longer for each bar of ammo to reload, so you need to make sure you aren't wasting any of your ammo. Well, there you guys go. 75 advanced tips for 75 brawlers. If you guys enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments down below. I mean, this video was such a hard video to make, but it was so fun as well. Well, anyway, guys, if you guys enjoyed that video, I highly recommend you go check out this video right here.